So this time around, we're going to be looking at human trafficking, where uh, we've seen the Middle East as being a popular area for Ugandans being trafficked there. And according to a report uh, that is by uh, Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, it is estimated that actually uh, yeah, Ugandans trafficked are uh, between 7,000 to 12,000 that leave this country, uh, go to overseas in some of these countries, most so, in the, most so in the Middle East, and end up being trafficked. Despite the fact that there are legal methods through which people can actually uh, carry out work, or that is uh, well stipulated ways of exploitation of labor, we still find that many Ugandans end up being trafficked out of Uganda. And even some here in Uganda, human trafficking happening in Uganda, where we find that people are brought from a particular part of the country to another particular part of the same country and end up in acts. Uh, however, that maybe they were not very sure that that's what they're going to be ending up. Uh, just to give it shape, uh, Felix, when we talk about human trafficking, human trafficking, for the benefit of our viewer, what are we referring to here? Well, uh, we, uh, we do have a story yeah, that we sure. actually want to share before we get into the discussion. Uganda's high youth unemployment rate, which ranges between 60 and 83 percent, depending on the reporting standards, pushes its ambitious young men and women to go wherever there might be opportunities. According to Statista Research Department 2020, over 105,787 people are trafficked to different countries worldwide in search of, among others, employment in Uganda. More than 800,000 people are trafficked to overseas through recognized and unrecognized companies in form of forced labor, marriage, and sexual exploitation. As the world centers much of its efforts towards fighting modern slavery, due to the illicit nature of human trafficking and limited local attention, the U.S. Department of State ranks Uganda as a country that does not fully meet the minimum standards for the elimination of trafficking, this has accounted for the rise in victim statistics here in Uganda as the Catholic Church prepares to join the rest of the world in celebrating the International Day of Prayers and Awareness Against Human Trafficking. The Church has strongly condemned the acts of trafficking Ugandans to Arab world by agents of Ugandan origin. Refrain and God bless you, but know why we took our children to be with you. Be true witnesses and help us to assist in one way or another the victims. Human trafficking in Uganda is both a domestic and international phenomenon. Within borders, Ugandan children as young as seven are forced to labor in agriculture, fishing, forestry, cattle herding, mining, quarrying, brick making, carpentry, steel manufacturing, street vending, bars, restaurants, and domestic service. However, disturbing statistics from the U.S. Department of State shows that girls and boys are exploited in prostitution. The main targets of domestic sex trafficking are girls and women between the ages of 13 and 24. From an international perspective, Uganda serves as a source, transit, and this nation country, young women are most vulnerable to transnational trafficking. They are often fraudulently recruited for employment and then exploited in forced labor or prostitution. The United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Qatar, Kuwait, Iraq, Iran, Egypt, and Algeria are among the most common destinations. School dropout rates continue to be higher for girls than boys. Women between the ages of 15 and 29 are also highly. Given these low levels of education and poor working conditions, women and girls are easily enticed to leave Uganda in hopes of a better future. Over the past 15 years, they have altered the predominantly male face of migration. However, the cartel involves Ugandans who work as agents of the Arabs. They hardly take cognizance of the kind of jobs they recruit for. It's all about commissions. It's against this backdrop that the Catholic Church wants agents of human trafficking to the Arab world penalized for negligence. We advocate for better laws and also
follow up on the recruiting companies. They also demand for a rehabilitation process for those they have managed to rescue and safely returned home. Many of the victims returned are suffering from psychosocial issues. We demand for a rehabilitation process centered on the human dignity and call for reinforcement of measures for protecting those who are rescued. Joanny Tandagira is a survivor of human trafficking, also wants the Minister of Internal Affairs to be keen on what they indicate on these people's passports as they contribute a lot to their stay in those countries. Think so much about the people you're giving passports. You personally put things in people's passports like housemaid. They reach Arab countries and the Arabs see that these people are professionally housemaids. So they can't have peace. Let us tighten our laws. The call is based on them. Set the captives free. Share that in Nasaku. UBC News. Uh, that story gives a picture of how uh, the situation is more so in the Arab world. Uh, Felix, before we went into that story, uh, just a broader a picture of when we refer to human trafficking because there could be people who think this is normal. It's not criminal despite our laws stipulating this very clear? Well, uh, <clears throat> probably, as, as you did say, Robert, we must give a clear depiction of what probably trafficking. Uh, and, and for you to get a simple immersion of the same, you simply have to dissect just the wording as it is. Human meaning, uh, anything that has life and uh, is uplifted to the status of knowledge, what a decision and all that, then trafficking is using illegal ways to get in from one jurisdiction to another jurisdiction. It is simply that. So it's basically moving human beings from one place to another unlawfully. Again, for unlawful purposes also. Most of the people who are trafficked are connected or attributed to acts of prostitution, slavitude, serv servitude, if I may call it, uh, just to mention but a few. So, you, uh, it is one thing that, that defeats, actually normally when we are studying they talk about it is that act that defeats at the end justifying the means. That from inception in law it is void ab initio from the start. Even if you are taking the person to go to do legal work, as long as the mean is wrong, whatever they will do is illegal. Now, most recent, uh, the, if you want to relate to this particular story, you do take notice that uh, churches coming out in relation to mostly now the would-be workers. We have been having this conversation, I think, for the last 10 years now or so, about this exporting, labor export. Uh, the first of it is labor export, right? But the, if, if you want to call... Uh, if you flip the face of it and behind it is where we find trafficking now. Uh, in as much as, that's why I'm saying that, and that's why I wrote in the aspect of the end can't justify the means in terms of trafficking, uh, that as long as it is illegal, for example, one of the survivors gives you a narrative story and says that, uh, and, and this is where our government probably should be cautioned. In Uganda, we have a profession called housemaid. It should be domestic work. Sweeper security guard because now this is what they put in their passports isn't this connivance now the minister of internal affairs has a department a full commission if not a directorate um, if i'm not mistaken Directorate headed by moses wabinoga commissioner full commission about uh, that is the anti-trafficking department yes you directorate can, you, you yes. can imagine mm. but then the start, the beginning, the inception of the same is, is within mm. the passport <laughs> office mm. the issuance of passports the wonder the lady is saying we need some tightened laws, mm. right? But if you talk about trafficking as an act, mm. trafficking, by the way, if I may give you a true version of the same, it is a rebirth of slave, uh, slave, slave mm. trade. Mm. Yeah. It is simply a modern <laughs> way of selling people. Yeah, it's actually just that this version of slave is self-implemented. Like, I choose to be a I'm interested slave. a bit. Yeah. Mm. I, have a, I, have, I have a bit of interest yeah. here, like I want mm. to work. But as I mm. told you, the first of it has labor. Mm. But the trueness of the same, I can tell you personally, through my time of practice, I have interrogated with people who are victims. Mm. I know this is true. I'm not mm. speaking this time. At this point, I'm not giving opinion. 
I'm speaking as a, as a person who has had mm. some Fel of these evidences. Uh, Felix, this time around it takes two fronts. We have people uh, that go through legal means. And when they reach there, what they wanted to do, a person is taken, you're going to be working on the airport, uh, cleaning, doing this, reaching a certain country, you end up in prostitution. We have those that, that actually even don't go through legal ways, that has just snaked out of the country. As I said, Robert, earlier, mm -hmm. trafficking. Mm -hmm. You see, going there legally and not finding work mm -hmm. is not yeah, trafficking. Being put that, into that's something a different else. thing. Mm -hmm. That's a different thing. Trafficking is you live illegally you're taken illegally mm. and with knowledge by the way because with mm. without knowledge would be different mm. that would be misrepresentation from the person but with knowledge for example do you know that in uganda there are people who travel up to probably china in containers mm. have you heard of those stories mm. people who travel to south africa in containers <coughs> smuggled smuggled yeah. people too. So, I, I actually so, know so a person saying, who actually mm -hmm. crossed from Uganda to South Africa in that manner so th and it's no, taken them about like six years to be able to settle in mm -hmm. South Africa because now they don't no, have that identity is what you're talking and they about. have to gamble their way through life. They take you as a chair, mm -hmm. a mattress mm -hmm. and all this kind mm -hmm. of thing. So that is what you're talking about. You see people, the issue of work is different. Mm -hmm. The inception of you to discuss trafficking must have an illegality from the start. Mm. But when they go and they don't get a job and they do prostitution and what and what, that, that's a discussion that is about professionalism, work, blah, 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 and what. All right? Mm -hmm. But we're talking about trafficking. And trafficking, you can't discuss trafficking in the absence of the word via gender based violence. You can't. Because you look at the ratios. At the end of the day, the women are most victims. So once you start the discussion of violence, you're going to end up with the issue of gender-based violence. Why? Women are more usable. They're gullible. As chat, yeah, the word. If, probably, if, if I may. Uh, actually, so. <laughs> if I may, just throw in a story there. Uh, there's a, a gentleman who comes and he's disguising himself as a doctor from South Africa with a big NGO attachment. He's the director of African representation for that company. And so he comes on to these ladies, invites them for a cup of tea, and they come with their friends. They're from jogging. So they were guys and ladies. So interestingly, he started sorting out the men one by one, takes the men outside, gives them a conversation, tells them, okay, so this deal that I have is first for ladies, it, this package is for ladies, then you guys, I'll call you tomorrow and have a meeting with you tomorrow. That is how he pruned out the men. So he stayed with only the ladies and he sold them all sorts of lies and they believed and at the end of the day, they ended up losing their property simply because of that gullibility. So as the report had stated, initially it was men that were being scavenged into this human trafficking but now because women are more gullible we are more susceptible to easily be convinced no it's okay you cannot call it about now you it's for the family and you think about it like and it's okay i can take the risk but not knowing that the risk you're taking is going to actually have a lifelong impact on your life socially economically family everything but uh as we talk about this whole picture, I think the one question that comes into my head is how come it's now a serious big talking conversation in Uganda? What has caused our nation to harbor such conversation in the first place? Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind for me is the fact that I think by and large, Uganda is one of the largest uh, entities for refugees. We receive a lot of refugees. We have refugees from the northern part of Uganda, borders, uh, across the borders on the west, across the borders on the east, across the borders on the south. And every single time, just if you look in your community, right now, <laughs> among your tenants on the flat that you're on, there's so many people from different countries. That shows you that we have a high rate of refugees in this country, which gives us a prune ground for human trafficking i think to take place because you have to manage the population these people are hungry we cannot fight for resources ugandan versus non-ugandans and so there's a group of people that have realized oh there's an opportunity here we can exploit this opportunity of the ever increasing numbers of nationals versus non-nationals and how do we do that human trafficking 
simply convince them that maybe they're taking you for labor export. Some are bold enough to even talk about, you know, the sex exploitation that they're going to be taken into just to make some money. But where does this all stem back to? The Bible says that the love of money is the source of evil. The source all of evils. evil. Why are these people willing to take such risks? Why are they re willing to take such gambles traveling in a container? I mean, we've watched, uh, at least I've seen the they movie do They're going for it. greener pastures, they're going to get employment, they're going to get money. And also, I think there's a factor of ignorance that some of the people that have been trafficked when interviewed, they will tell you that uh, they actually uh, did not believe that what they were going for was illegal. Uh, under Moses Winoga, Felix talked about that directorate, have been privileged to be in some of these meetings that they hold under some labor organization. But what is funny is that Uganda, under the Ministry of Labor, Gender and Social Development, has set up specific methods for anyone that is going to carry out labor mm -hmm. outside Uganda. But what happens, uh, <coughs> some group of people in the Arab world, maybe Ugandans, would find an Arab there, he has a company, he wants people to work for him, or he's dealing in sex trade. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a person X will come sex to Uganda, mm -hmm. get people, tell them, well, you're taking you to work, do certain things, and you're going to pass through, not air, through uh, Busia, then we go, then this. So at the end of the day that you find that some of them, actually it's because of ignorance, that they think what they're going through is formal, only to later find out that no, if it's exploitation of labor, exploitation of labor, these are the right criteria. There are even some countries but where Uganda would not have any memorandum of understanding uh, that it is very clear if you're going to do this particular work or this particular job, Uganda, if you're Ugandan, we can only follow you when you're in such and such a country. Mm. But you end up that someone will go, for example, for domestic workers, where we've seen human trafficking more in that particular area. If it's, not, it's only for the kingdom of uh, Jordan and Saudi Arabia that Uganda has a pact that they can monitor. But you find someone telling you, uh, I'm in a bad situation, we are, we are trafficked and now we are sex raped in Oman. Then you ask, but how did you get to such a country, my dear Uganda? No, but 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 uh, all that said, I think uh, there's a, there's a great burden that falls on the side of government yeah. mm. uh, as the custodian of every citizen of this country, and away either on land and away from land, uh, I must believe and trust that I have personally again have mm. interaction and, and even away from mainland Uganda, mm. even in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. I've been privileged for the times I've been through for transit. I have met people. Let me tell you what, what my experience. At one time in Addis Ababa, I had a, tra a, a, a transit and there were about 25 girls, Ugandans, and they were just asking people from Uganda, like any person they meet, to serve to Yamba, to this stranded diva, to this enyonye, to komeza wano, to vadu, when you go to Dubai, and, and, and it's, 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 it's funny, we have Ugandans in countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, Singapore. Have you seen what's happening in Malaysia? Mm -hmm. Now, why I say all this is that the, our government officials have, on the face of it, and those things you're saying, the, what's the Ministry of Labor? Mm -hmm whatever they are doing, they are trying to mm. do some cosmetic, I call it cosmetic mm. pervariancy. Mm. Mm. It, is, it is simply <laughs> for, for show. Okay. Here's the thing. We have one airport, at least so far. Mm. I don't know of, of any other. Mm. We have one civil aviation. People who go out of this country can't be known. How can you say you can't know? You see other countries, let me tell you, have you ever encountered, encountered a scenario? Uh, uh, if you remember, some time ago, we were sitting, I think, in university, this gentleman, American gentleman, who had a terrible accident on Entebbe Road. And this is something that got me thinking. The American embassy brought out all its machinery to evacuate a dead body. A dead a.k.a. cops, if you want, you want to call it also. A dead body. They, everything was done. No, no, this is an American. We cannot mm. leave the body like this. We take it clean. We have to... My friend, the uh, people came, officials were... For a dead body. 
this government of an ordinary American, American citizen. Yeah. He wasn't any mm -hmm. official, you know, personnel. Dictator. I have had, there's a yeah. time I had a matter against a Britain, a Britain a citizen. And I was facing the whole country. I didn't tell the police there. The embassy sent lawyers mm -hmm. every day, people to bring food. I was an ordinary citizen. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? I have heard stories of these girls mm -hmm. in these Dubai places mm -hmm. you're talking about where even bilateral agreements are there. What is the use of those embassies there? Mm -hmm. You know, countries, third world countries don't value citizens. Is and it not valuing citizens or lacking capacity? No, it's not Robert, valuing citizens. Please don't don't be <laughs> and resources. Now, like no. Because I've seen embassies of some <coughs> third world countries. Point. Honestly, when you get there, you live in Rwanda. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about the, I'm not a Nigerian, mm -hmm. Sudanese. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the Uganda mm -hmm. where I subscribe mm -hmm. and where I owe my allegiance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how other countries are doing whatever they are doing in the negative. Mm -hmm. But what do we look up to? Ugandans, when you travel, let me tell you a scenario. And I'm talking about now real personal experiences. You go to the embassy of Uganda, in, in, uh, that is London. And guess what? People there, they come in over at what time? Even when you have an issue, you come on Wednesday, come on what? You know, there's, there's a club of so a particular the Ugandan culture before. is in London. It's, it's current. I'm telling you, yes, I'm telling you personal experiences. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? If you want to talk about trafficking, what Internal Affairs is doing here, it should be done because there's that department of trafficking in almost all of the embassies, mm. in the, wherever we are present. Mm. It should be equally done. Can you imagine people are trafficked from Uganda to Tanzania, mm. to Kenya? Mm. Mm. Then that's where they push because most Where you have the East African community, mm. you have additional protocols that yeah. are being mm. yeah. put into a process and are being kick-started. And you still have trafficking within a region where you have a free movement <laughs> of service of good and what you get the point so i think robert for me with some of these stories when you talk about them the reason why i talked about cosmetic reaction by those ministries and these departments is because probably it is for budget satisfaction and pr but the real the, i want you to tell me how do people how do you board a plane here and you live to Jordan. And you know very well, the country knows it has no agreement. Why don't we have some examination? Honestly, by the way, let me tell you, every day in one of those Middle East countries, Uganda loses more than two people. Uh, Felix, in I as much as lastly we appreciate mm -hmm. that they have also done so much great in terms of work, employment and so, but we must tighten the grip if we care, like some of the other countries do. Yes, uh, Priscilla, finally. Um, finally, what, uh, two things that come to my mind. One, this depicts what is absent in Uganda, that people are so gullible to be wanting to go through such situations yeah. in such of greener pastures. It shows you what our economy is looking like currently, that it does not have room enough to accommodate every single Ugandan to be able to have a GDP that is survivable on daily income of sorts. It also shows you that perhaps the quality of education that people are currently having is not good enough for them to fit into the collar jobs. You call them which color? White collar, White collar jobs. <laughs> for them, collar for, yeah, for that matter. Yeah, so they may not be able to fit in. Why? Because of the quality of education. As you know, mm. the other day we hosted uh, the, the person from uh, Wakiso, uh, one of the best districts in the country. What is uh, Karamoja? Where is Ajmani? Uh, why are they not having the same level of quality in education? Those are things that need to be looked at. Mm. Into You're also looking at absentia of social welfare to every single Ugandan. And this Equal is where I, I am reminded, equal opportunities, uh, uh, I'm, I'm reminded of one of the presidential candidates, um, Muntu, Mugisha Muntu, yes, he did mention that equality was one of the things that he wanted to focus on, that every Ugandan can have a baseline, especially where health was concerned, that yeah. we can all have equal health rights and opportunities as far as being Ugandans in this country is concerned. So that shows you that th those things. But it also shows you that on the other hand, it's, it may be up to government, but what if never government never steps up? 
where is then the role of community where is the role of family i think we now go back to the beginning and the source of who and the core of who we are as family as members of communities districts and whatever what have we done to ensure that our young people our average age is 15 years our young people have we caused them to love and work within what they have and not want greener pastures to the extent of being so gullible and usable and ending up being human trafficked to the extent that you find them at airports crying like that mm. so it is something that we need to think about while government is thinking about what they have to do or they are really trying to do something it goes back to you and me the power is in you and me to ensure that our brothers our sisters do not actually have to go through such things we can protect each other against tra human trafficking. We can't protect each other against human trafficking. This is a global challenge. Uh, but coming back home in Uganda, many of the people that leave this country that are trafficked is basically they are craving, they are searching for employment. So that explains levels of poverty. But also we have high levels of ignorance that you'll find a couple of victims of trafficking will tell you either I didn't know I was being trafficked, I thought these people were credible, were doing a good service. So we urge government to continue popularizing measures, legal measures, through which Ugandans can access or which we can have externalization of labor. But also, like Priscilla said, it is upon you, you the Ugandan there, to ensure that if you're to move out of the country, you're moving through legal means, not illegal ways. Because remember, that will determine what actually uh, will happen. There are so many registered organizations and uh, Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social and Social Development has done quite a tremendous job. Of course we know you have challenges like porous borders and uh, other challenges, but it's upon you to ensure that your safety is fast as you crave for employment. When we return, we'll be looking at some of the stories in the print media. This is Good Morning Uganda. Yes! Enjoy great value from Airtel with the all new My Packalast Combo offers. We have customized especially for you the best deals on minutes, data, and SMS with our 3 in 1 My Packalast Combo to give you the best value as you stay in touch with friends and family. To activate my Packalast voice combo, dial star 100 star 2 star 1 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network. Shopping needs come to Capital Shoppers. We have a variety of items like foods, garments, cosmetics, and all sorts of drinks. Enjoy your shopping experience at affordable prices in our fully stocked branches in the following areas Tinder Station Road, opposite Makere Business School, along Port Bell Road, Duster Street, opposite Nakasero Market, and Garden City on Yusuf Lule Road. To all our customers and suppliers, we thank you for your continuous support. Stay safe, wash your hands, sanitize and wear your mask always. Coming soon on UBC. Food is more than just a great meal. It's even better when it's prepared with art. soon on your public broadcaster brought to you by because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good daddy surprise here is a pizza for you happy birthday to you
Daddy, you look not impressed. My daughter, this is not meaningful to me. Alleluia Natural Drinks is my ideal gift Auda. today. Hallelujah Day. Alleluia Ginger Tea Drink and Alleluia Tamarind Drinks are the most perfect nutritious and healthy products that help everyone to boost their immune system to get complete relief of more sicknesses like joint pains, cough, diabetes, blood pressure, easy digestion and many more. And certified by UNDS. For orders, find us at Bifro House on Sa Apolo Kagwa Road, opposite MBI. Alleluia Natural Drinks, perfect for your health. Alleluia Day. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Live from Now Avenue in UBC Studios. This is Good Morning Uganda. Good morning once yeah. again. Thank you for keeping it on UBC TV. It's about 38 minutes from the hour of 7. So uh, I believe you're already woken up and getting prepared for work. Those that are still home, well, uh, time and jam. Later on, we will be giving us more. But we are here to yeah. keep you updated with what is happening and looking at what are some of those stories in the dailies. But before that, Priscilla, I saw you excited. What is that story that really caught your attention as you peruse through? Oh, the story that caught my attention. Mm. Well, the new normal, as far as education is concerned, I'm seeing a whole <laughs> graph here on the front page of the Daily Monitor. Mm. I'm thinking, how is this going to work out to ensure mm. that there's no dead year for many people? Mm. But, I mean, I'm not the Minister of Education mm. and Sports. <laughs> so, yeah. we shall leave things of Caesar to Caesar and mm. uh, <laughs> die on our own mudayas. The technocrats there. But, <laughs> speaking mm. of which, I would like to say good morning to the family of Ruima. They are watching Good Morning Uganda today. Thank you so much for joining us and speaking of which daily monitor starts you off on the 9th of february uh, 2021 with how government plans to reopen all mm -hmm. schools mm -hmm. and they're in consideration of the calendar that is uh, from the january of 18 to 31st march you do have p7 candidates break off till the 31st of march then there's also s1 s6 candidates are also in school currently until the april 6th you get to look at P4 and P5, P6, P3, uh, S3 and S5 are also in consideration. There's consideration of June in week 8 where you have P1, P2 and P3. And so the list is on. You do have a child in your household. Which class are they in? Buy yourself a copy of the Daily Monitor and find out how school is going to be resuming for them. And prepare in advance. But elsewhere in the Daily Monitor today we get to look at 40 prisons, chiefs, moved in reshuffle that has been done you also get to look at your pdf soldiers injured in somalia chop crash we also get to look at of course standards deals at unra kaya you have psfu lands you have fresh cuts parliament etc you are interested in a job rather than going for human trafficking you want to actually take part of these standards and participate in them prosper is bringing you budget skits those stories and much more the lizard of course is commenting on the story that we looked at earlier on Kadaga Institute to train MPs on a debate. Will she be evaluating them on the floor or <laughs> that's an interesting one. 
<laughs> good is an institute and it will have uh, <laughs> members of parliament attend yes. then we'll get to know in the new vision uh, still it is uh, ag on agenda catering for big numbers of students that is government reviews COVID-19 stand operating procedures for schools uh, <laughs> mm. A story here, Chabazinga <coughs> launches elderly fitness project. Mm. <laughs> but the ladies, the way they are putting on Gomez is that they are trying to carry out fitness. Uh, yeah, so we can get that so shot what? more So we cannot clearing. do fitness in Gomez's. Fitness is not <laughs> reduced to clothing. Exercise. Please. <laughs> exercise. You should something that makes you a bit more comfortable mm -mm. as you stretch. Uh, you You're kick speaking around. from a man's perspective. <laughs> you jump please. These are women of dignity. You <laughs> can see their edges. You don't expect them to be wearing jeggings and party party things. Oh. <laughs> Still uh, in the new vision, uh, my husband put me first even when I was barren. That is a story on the page 35 and 36 of the new vision. Check that. They're exercising the ladies. Mm. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, COVID-19 government to pay Nambole. That is uh, 1.4 billion over business losses. It's now being used as a treatment center there for COVID-19. Community news, Kumi's Reverend Okunya speaks out and Somalia. Here we see UPDF soldiers injured in Chopa crash. Chagulani picks Mbabazi's lawyer in poll petition. And for home learning, yes, today there is pass a level entrepreneurship, chemistry and mathematics and tomorrow geography and uh, entrepreneurship will be availed in the new vision. So those are some of the stories there. Finance ministry changes budget planning. The Daily Guide this morning is bringing you in the news. Robert Chagulani, new party leader, filed additional evidence in the Supreme Court to bluster his election petition challenging President Museveni's victory. You get to look at Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israel Prime Minister, denied corruption charges against him as his graft trial resumed weeks before a fourth national election inside two years. Editors pick, they've picked for you in the world. U.S. President Joe Biden says he will not lift economic sanctions against Iran until it complies with the terms agreed under the 2015 nuclear deal. For the regional, we get to look at a section of traditional chiefs in Alur Kingdom have asked the government to allow cultural institutions have representatives in parliament as part of special interests group. Okay, that's interesting. But from the archives, we get to look at a view of Fort Lugard at Old Kampala Hill <coughs> in 1994. Monument which overlooks the city center is a historical site named after Captain Lugard, who was the first governor of the protectorate. Which reminds me, there was a meme sometime going around social media. The first Ugandan to wear Gomesi, the first Ugandan to wear a bus coat, first Ugandan to drive a bicycle. Remember, social media can come up with all sorts of there were funny pictures. Today in history, we get to look at Binaisa drops Minister Mwanga. The year was 1980, and Uganda's first first Catholic nun, who was also a doctor. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, in the new vision, more stories there as we move to the 8th of March. That is towards Women's Day. They give you so much regarding women. And here there is a picture of Susan Iruja, a resident of Nakawa in Kampala, vending snacks on 3rd Street Industrial Area, Kampala, advises women to work hard and do any job as long as they earn from it. Then we look at Noyo Member of Parliament. Today they bring you Rujumbura County, that is uh, Jim Mokwezi. So much about him. Honorable Francis Zake, Mitiana Municipality. Then uh, Ibrahim Semujung and Akira Municipality. Today in history, uh, the new video was on this very date, on the 9th of February 1980, when Bina Isa transferred Mwanga. President Godfrey Rukongo Abina Issa pictured announced the transfer of powerful Minister of Internal Affairs Paul Mwanga to the position of Ambassador to the United States. However, Minister Mwanga turned it down. Nice has also remembered so much for Entebbe Uma. Uh, still on the same day in 1978, Winnie Mandela sentenced. Uh, that is Winnie Mandela restricted to a black township at Brantford, Orange Free State was sentenced to six months imprisonment, suspended for four years for breaking her ban and house arrest order by receiving unauthorized visits by friends and relatives. Now we look at the COVID-19 statistics. You know, Priscilla, recently we lost uh, the cultural leader of Baguede. He succumbed to COVID-19. 
and he will be buried in a period of two weeks according to family there. So today as we speak Uganda, we've registered so far 327 deaths of COVID-19. So please, 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 prevention is better than cure. And of course, though we have some laboratory tests there for the cure, it's very better that you prevent yourself. We we'll move to, uh, that is how the region is performing. Uh, Kenya, they have, uh, Rwanda, they have so far lost, that is uh, 220. Uh, Kenya, they have 1,779. And South, and South Sudan, they have six, uh, 66 cases registered there. In the world of sport for the Daily Monitor, this morning we get to look at Bossa expressing no fear of venom. Of course, the Uganda Premier League has returned and tonight we do have a fixture, Express versus Vipers. Look at their last meetings when you read about the story in the Daily Sports. You also get to look at the continent on Africa, Morocco outlast Mali, retain Chan 2020. You have FMU weather competition fees approve two billion shillings for budgeting and in all sports you get to look at onyango's star continuing to rise with a new deal having signed a deal to become an ambassador in the world of basketball silverbacks await covid19 pass to go for training and of course every single tuesday the daily monitor in sports they bring you the score line which you get to see how your team performed in your favorite league and their table standings from english spanish italian Bundesliga this league and the French league among others in the new vision sports uh, they give you so much it is a bullfight uh, that is a uh, star times Uganda Premier League they give you the matches will be versing who uh, that is right from today Friday and Saturday but also uh, they give you more regarding uh, what what is happening in the KCCA team camp there Yes, Priscilla, in the East African. The East African this morning, we get to look at some of the opinions that are coming through for the course of this week. We do have Simon Johnson. Vaccines alone won't wipe out virus. Testing safety protocols are still essential. I like the diagram there of someone well covered in gear with a, a you know a syringe and then a bone somewhere and the testing kit we also get to look at another opinion that has been written by charles onyango obo what to start want to start business in african states consider their in brackets dishonesty very interesting story and then you also get to look at ongwen's guilty verdict a blow to impunity globally as well as people in power have mystical faculties they see what we don't see and letter to the editor blue economy has the magic bullet for post covid 19 recoveries those are some of the opinions that are coming through another opinion very interesting party goes on as dead fish from dying lake victoria lands on table very interesting for uganda considerations and high quality seeds act like vaccines of sorts for hunger so those are some of the opinion stories that are coming through from the tea this morning that is the east african you must read and know what's happening in the region around you so every morning please make it a date with us from 6 30 where we give you all the information you need as you go about the day next will be traffic updates for priscilla will ensure that you get faster safe and sound to your destination. We'll return with traffic updates. Live from Now Avenue in UBC Studios. This is Good Morning Uganda. Surprise! Here is a pizza for you. Happy birthday to you! Daddy, you look not impressed. My daughter, this is not meaningful to me. Alleluia Natural Drinks is my ideal gift Auda, today. Alleluia, alleluia Ginger Tea Drink and Alleluia Tamarind Drinks are the most perfect nutritious and healthy products that help everyone to boost their immune system to get complete relief of more sicknesses like joint pains, cough, diabetes, blood pressure, easy digestion and many more. And certified by UNBS. For orders, find us at Bifro House on Sir Apollo Kagwa Road, opposite MBI. Alleluia Natural Drinks, perfect for your health. Alleluia. Pick of the day on UBC, brought to you by. 
Wake up to Good Morning Uganda, weekdays on UBC. Live from Nile Avenue in UBC Studios, this is Good Morning Uganda. Was brought to you by... Thank you for choosing MTN. Use MTN Mobile Money, Bandos, or other services to get sent you points. The more you use, the more sent you points you get. We look forward to many more years together. Thank you. Capital Shoppers, we have a variety of items like foods, garments, cosmetics, and all sorts of drinks. Enjoy your shopping experience at affordable prices in our fully stocked branches in the following areas. Ntinda Stretcher Road, opposite Makere Business School along Port Bell Road, Duster Street opposite Nakasero Market, and Garden City on Yusuf Lule Road. To all our customers and suppliers, we thank you for your continuous support. Stay safe, wash your hands, sanitize and wear your mask always. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. you Uganda in case you have just risen tuned in your television set you are watching good morning Uganda Priscilla Naloga is my name and it's time for some traffic updates maneuvering around the cities where what we want to check out looking at the red zones and also the green zones which I would call the safe zones now want to look at uh, this part of Kampala where you do have Mukwano Mall of course you do have Arua Park Plaza and looking at Namayumba trying to find my way through Makere and perhaps end up at Sapo find out what's happening on the other side of the city now looking at the city center overall generally of course you would expect that uh, the area where you do have Kampala road is actually having some jam do you do know that uh, commuter taxis are part of the reason why we do have some jam downtown Kampala expected as every single morning people trying to make their way into the heart of the city and most businesses are actually downtown so you will have both traffic in terms of motor vehicles and also you will have traffic in terms of pedestrians because of the non-motorized lane that has been put in downtown Kampala but you get to look at at the upper side of Kampala around city squares you get to see that there's not so much jam as of this morning time check is uh, four minutes to the top of the hour 8 a.m. and around that square which is Speak Road you do have some little bit of jam which would be the Sheraton roundabout just a little bit of jam for vehicles maybe coming in from Lumumba but the rest of the Sheraton roundabout is actually okay for you to use as a buy route this morning now we get to look at Namirembe Road, obviously for reasons that everyone's getting into, into the heart of the city. This area is usually a red zone from Namirembe Road. You're looking at the bus terminals in the different areas. You're looking at Bakuli is also usually a red zone this morning. The other red zones that you have currently because of the state of the road is martin road and also you do have the chagwe road now there are some potholes that are equally building up on this route and so it's causing a lot of traffic jam you'll be surprised that this is only because of a pothole that you're having some red zones there but away from that uh we get to look at fort lugard which is appearing in the historicals today in the daily monitor around namayimba bus park you do have some jam building up there in the areas where you do have aga khan school there is a little a bit of jam building up but it's nothing for you to fret about you look at Gaddafi Road which then leads you into Makere around the university area around Ham Towers you get to see that there is a red zone there and because of the traffic lights in this area that is why you're having a red zone they can manage the traffic but away from and as you can see of course the traffic lights have changed now in favor of those moving from Gaddafi Road and getting ready to either head to Makere or head to Wandegare for that matter speak 
speaking of Wandega this morning, it also does not look so bad as we would be expecting. There is a little bit of jam, but at the cross section of the roads. That is Bombo Road and this particular road, Makere Road. But the rest of it does not look so bad. Away from it, you get to see that then the jam starts to build up a little bit there. And we do have it building all through Wandega on Bombo Road. And it's going into Karere, Kabule and the likes. Speaking of which, this morning you do have um, the roundabouts. Of course, most affected is Mulago roundabout and the Kalere roundabout. Surprisingly, Kalere roundabout does not look so bad. Uh, you can actually use it as an option in and out of the heart of the city. However, on the other side, you are having the Mulago roundabout, the old Mulago roundabout that then leads Binaisa Road to the new Mulago roundabout. It is having some jump buildup because people are using Cafero Zone. They're using this area as a back route away from the Kalere traffic jam to be able to get into the heart of the city avoiding the traffic jam on Bombo Road. Surprisingly, every time you think you're avoiding traffic jam on the highway you will find it in the Panya routes that you're using. So that is why we're having the jam building up here on Binaisa Road leading into the Mulago roundabout into Yusuf Ure. So as you can see, the red zones are simply because people are trying to run away from the traffic. But you get to look at other areas that are affected by traffic this morning in Makerere. You get to see that around Bugema University, the Kampala branch leading you to Bombo Road, Boise, uh does not look so bad. Of course, Boise does have intersection with a couple of roads. One of them is Sapolo Road. And so far, just away from Sapolo Road, it does clear just until you get to the roundabout is where you might have a little bit of a challenge. But I think it's not so much of a challenge, more than 10 minutes. Of course, trucks are using these routes here to be able to stay away from the main ways of traffic and so it does affect how jam flows here because they're trying to get onto the Kampala Northern Bypass. Away from that you get to enter into Waise and uh, Kawempe this morning. Of course there is that other cross section at Waise Market that also has a lot of jam every single morning but uh, you do have traffic officers that are coming from uh, Kawempe, uh, Kawempe Police Station. They do help manage this traffic jam. However it's also very impossible. If you don't have the patience for it, uh, you might want to stay away from it because uh, it does bring in uh, traffic uh, from Naweru and the likes. Uh, Kampala and Kawempe Division this morning does not look so bad for vehicles of course getting into Kawempe. However, if you're coming from Kawempe trying to get into the heart of the city, then you do have some slow but moving jam. At least from what we're seeing here, the orange line does show you there is jam but it is slowly moving. So I think that is something also that you can consider. Away from that, as you know, you may not have so many routes to use to get out of Kawempe into the heart of the city, but may this guide you to make your decisions as you come into Kampala. A wonderful morning to you. We get on to Good Morning Uganda Agenda with Robert Shiravo discussing something that matters to us as a nation. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. This is Good Morning Uganda. Double Data. Airtel introduces Double Data. The biggest deal ever on smartphones in Uganda. Buy a smartphone, 3G or 4G, and get 100% data bonus from Airtel. Airtel is giving you 100% bonus data on on all weekly and monthly bundles for every new smartphone connected to Airtel for the first three months. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to enjoy double data. Double data, double data. Oh, bino bie biru mahabaya, yeah! Airtel, the smartphone network. Regulated by Uganda Communications Commission. Coming soon on UBC. Food is more than just a great meal. It's even better when it's prepared with art.
Coming soon on your public broadcaster. Brought to you by... Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. Buyo gila nyafe Uganda kuladi Afrika. Tode mwa kumwenya. Uru waka mwenye mwenye waka judaba nyuanyi. Mbira yovu dea tukula kumukwano. Nobu tondo obu tubeza au. Nibutu sobo ze sabudu mwa kubira u mungeri. Uba fena tulibanja ulu. Ne mungeri jitu kwa saga nyamu emili mjafe. Ni yechi tugata na tufuko mtu umu Bwebu umu ya buwa mchoku nywa Echa alelu ya jingate drink Na alelu ya tamalin drink Edeke ndi kumale nyonta Atenga wejanja wa mbidigo Echa uku nywa chino chechite gere mbidi jafe Kubacha wabutonde chukume kuchukumi Uume ruwe chukume ya chilimu mbisugu enkoge Alelu ya tamalin drink Na alelu ya jingate drink Bekodewa ba alelu ya reflex orge Healthy solution and nutritional research center limited Ufu ni lichoku nyo cha alelu ya lero Okufo kumaduka ona Baku hile kunuti satu muenda satu Abili mwenya kuminatano Mkaga mmokaga Tell me how do you do We're here to show some appreciation for the things you do Send you for today and they send you for tomorrow Send you for every time and everywhere you go We love you so and we enjoy life with you We are happy, happy, happy to know that we will go with you That's why we say send you, send you, send you, send you Sent you for choosing MTN. Use MTN Mobile Money, Bandos, or other services to get Sent you points. The more you use, the more Sent you points you get. We look forward to many more years together. Sent you. Welcome to English in a Minute. This expression sounds like a guessing game about food. Jonathan, I can't find anyone to watch my cat while I'm away. And I have asked everyone. You haven't asked me? What am I? Chopped liver? Jonathan, the last time you watched my cat, you put her in a cat prison. It was a pet spa. We use this expression when we feel upset at being overlooked or ignored. It's another way of saying, what about me? In parts of America, chopped liver is traditionally served as a side dish and not the main course. So it's a food that is more easily forgotten. And that's English in a Minute. You may have heard of physical distancing. This means keeping at least two arms length apart from other people at all times to reduce the spread of coronavirus. But why is it so important? Without physical distancing, each person infected with coronavirus will infect two to three others. Each of these people go on to infect two to three more, who each go on to infect another two or three people and so on. Within a month, the infection will spread from one to 406 people. But if each person halves the number of people they come into close contact with, the number of infections drops dramatically. Each person would only infect one or sometimes two people, and each of those infected people would only infect one or occasionally two more. So the disease spreads much more slowly. In a month, the infection would only spread from one to 15 people. That's the power of physical distancing. Keep at least two arms length distance from as many people as you can to reduce infections and save lives. That way you protect yourself, the people you love, and your country. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. Oh, 
Well, uh, thank you for watching from all parts of this country. Those watching outside Uganda on our various platforms, thank you so much for keeping it on UBC TV. Those watching from border to border, we have nationwide coverage. Thank you so much for keeping it on UBC TV. It is just six minutes past the hour of eight. It is a new day, arise and shine. Have a positive mindset, and I know victory will be your way. Once again, I'm Robert Chirabo Nintono, and this is Good Morning Uganda Agenda, where we look at issues of national concern, and today we are going to be looking at land acquisition. While it is a desire for everybody to have land, to own land, but many times some have been fleeced, others have ended up in courts of laws, losing court battles, yet they really got their money, hard hand money, and went to purchase land. With us in studio to discuss this is a senior citizen, a senior presidential advisor on Buganda matters, a man who was among the seven commissions, commissioners on the commission into land uh, matters led by uh, Justice Catherine Mamgemeleire. He is also uh, a member of the Uganda Hearts Institute. He's also in the Red Cross. Uh, there are so many categories, but also politically, he was once actually the state minister for information and national guidance. Mm -hmm. That is uh, in 1979 there under the mm -hmm. Rule government, and mm -hmm. this is Owechitiwa Dr. Robert Sebunya. You're most welcome to us. Thank you very much. Can, can I take this off? Feel free to do Thank so. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. I'm so far to be on this uh, program, Morning Uganda. And, I'm, and uh, I'm happy that you've given me an opportunity to come and uh, share and discuss issues of national concern, especially land. Mm. And you're also very grateful that the Lord has kept you around. You've yes. seen most of these things. Yes. You're part of history of <laughs> Uganda. Which team, how have you been? Uh, sure. How have you been? Uh, I last heard from you when I was trying to steal notes from a book that you're writing. Mm. That is seeing Uganda through my eyes. Yes, I am. Um, it is already ready. Oh, it's now. It's almost ready. Mm. It's ready for printing. Mm. Um, we are just now, you know, putting things together, ready for printing. Mm. Uh, it is a book on um, Uganda, mm. and it is uh, titled. Uganda through my eyes. Mm. So whatever I have seen, mm. you know, is contained in that book. It has been the challenge of Uganda that we don't have people who... All the challenges books. are in there. Mm. Successes and challenges are in there. Even solutions mm. are there. I love it, Uganda through your eyes. What yes. you've seen, you've yes, been around, yes, you've been yes. blessed. Yes, uh, all that is mm. in there. Mm. Mm. Well, before you go into serious business, I also must ask you, mm. how is your team Express? I was reading and <laughs> was played for Express. I, 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 do you know that you I, a I, I used to play for you Express. Mm. Uh, the late Joseph Chonka, mm. uh, Jore Joe was a great friend of my dad. Mm. And I, I, I loved uh, football. So when I was at school uh, uh, in 1958, that's when it started. And it was a popular club, uh, very good for people. People loved it, and uh, I prayed for it. Mm. Yes, that's why they had the slogan "Mukwano Kwabanji." Mukwano Kwabanji. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, but now I don't know. Uh, I, I've been out of touch with the club, but it is still there. It is still there. It is still Mukwano Kwabanji. Maybe you have tickled me now. <laughs> I should go and find out <laughs> yeah. what is actually happening. Mm. 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 Yeah. Uh, away from that, we can take a whole day discussing with the OHT. Well, like I told you, he's a man that has so many courts, right from the political aspect of Uganda. He was also the, once the Minister for Health in Uganda Kingdom. Mm. So yes. he talk about land issues. Uh, he is from the he was in Uganda Kingdom. He's well rooted there. But also regarding government, he was one mm. of the seven commissioners just on the Justice Catherine mm. Montgomery's mm. Commission of Inquiry into Land Matters. So, which Tiwa, yes, when please. we talk about land acquisition, let's mm. begin by understanding the various land systems in Uganda. Mm. Well, first of all, I would like to collect uh, uh, what you said. Uh, I, I was the chairman of Uganda Heart Institute mm. and also chairman of Uganda Red Cross Society. So you were both. Mm. 
uh, I, I retired mm. from the Heart Institute, but I'm still mm. concerned. I'm still a member of the of the Uganda Heart Institute. Mm. I used to meet you more in Red Cross. You remember? When yes, you were yes. There. Right, you're mm. right. Um, I'm also, you know, a member of the Uganda Red Cross, but I'm no longer active. I'm no longer mm. chairman. They are, they are, they have looked at new ones. Mm. But I served there for almost five years as a chairman. Mm. You know, so. Coming back to the question you asked me, um, land is an important uh, component of our development. And every Ugandan, you know, must own land. You put the word well, must. Is yes, it must, must, Ugandan, must, must own land. land. Must. Is there a land for the land, the land that created, you, you, uh, that God created is for Ugandans. Mm. You know? So every Ugandan born mm. is entitled to have a piece of land for development. Because you cannot develop when you are in the air. You must be on the ground. So land is important. Now, uh, um, the president, I think, uh, felt that uh, a commission of inquiry into the land matters was necessary at that time. Uh, because our commission was uh, uh, established. <laughs> uh, 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 the first one was uh, 50 years ago, you know, and the president, that was 50 years ago, it was appointed by the governor because there were problems mm -hmm. at that time, you know. And this time I think the president also felt that there are so many complaints about land issues. Maybe it was wise, and it was wise, to establish a, a commission to inquire what are the problems, you know? Why are Ugandans complaining about land? Why are Ugandans complaining about land commission? Why are Ugandans complaining about the surveyors? Why are Ugandans complaining about the process? At the, at, the, at the Ministry of Lands. Why? That should not be there. So there were complaints which were going to him every, almost every day. He said, ah, uh -uh, that's enough. Let's appoint a commission. And the commission was, uh, was very good. He had done a very, very good job. He had a very, very good job. And uh, fortunately, we had uh, our chairperson who knew what the country needs. He guided us very, very well, and uh, we visited uh, almost the whole country. But whenever we went, problems were about land comp complaints, land evictions, you know, land uh, acquisition without permission, you know, customary land being taken by big people in mm. government, you know, uh, acquisition of land, you know, without uh, compensation. Mm. You know, all that we we encountered, mm. and in our report we 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 gave very good reasons. Mm. Unfortunately, I think the president has not uh, had fine time to sit down and read it, because we made our report, we handed it over. I think last year, mm. no, the, yeah, last year. It's last year when you're done towards the end of the year. Towards the end mm. of the year. And uh, then politics came in, then elections came in. I think uh, now that when he has settled, I'm sure he's going to sit down and work on our report. Our report is very, very good. And we think that, uh, that uh, all the problems on, on land will be sorted out if they, they take the report as it is. We can, of course, add in whatever we have left out. but. By and large, I think the report was very good. Doctor, where do challenges of land acquisition in Uganda stem from, if you could give us a clear picture? Mm. Well, you see, uh, land, in the past, there are a lot of people who had large, large uh, land mm. areas. Mm and there were fewer people, <laughs> you know. Mm. Uh, uh, at that time, I would take a case of Buganda, for instance. 
uh, you'll find the chief having a lot of land, but with fewer people on, on, on the land. And uh, today, the situation is different. There are so many, many, many people craving for land. And the land does not expand. Oh. No. Whatever was there a hundred years ago, that is what is there. But then the population is growing. And as I said earlier, Ugandans are entitled to, each Ugandan born is entitled to a piece of land. How realistic is that? That's the question. Oh. How realistic it is? It is realistic. Provided we, we do away with the people who have got uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres unutilized, and the people are there, you know, the people are there, they would like to have a piece of land there, and the landlord is saying, no, 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 this is for my children. He may have two, three children. So these are issues mm -hmm. which uh, we, the, the commission, you know, looked into. You know, so the problem now is uh, land has become a hot cake. Oh. <laughs> you know, everybody wants to have a piece of land, half an acre, fifty by fifty decimals. You know, <laughs> you know, fifty <laughs> by fifty decimals. <laughs> and you see, if you look at all these, uh, the, the, in fact, you are UBC advertises. Mm. You know. All these building uh, contractors, you know, you know, oh. uh, 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 companies which are dealing in estates, mm. they are all selling, and the people are buying as far as the well. Mm. Can you imagine? Mm. As far as the well, people are buying. That is, that's an indication mm. of what is likely to happen. It's going to be a boom here, mm. you know, and if the government is not careful, mm. you know. We're going to have a crisis mm. because the population now we are what 40, mm. 40 million? 45, about 45 million. Oh, 45 million. Mm. About that. Yes, but how much land do we have? Mm. I uh, we went to the north, and you'll be surprised. One person having eight square miles under the uh, customary land, mm. and and the poor people there, they don't know. Somebody smart from here, mm. born there, goes and brings in surveyors. They survey the land. He comes back here in the land office. He's given a land title. He goes back and kicks those people. Aunties and uncles. We've seen that. Mm. Aunties and uncles. And they look, we called them at one time at the commission and said, uh, the, the auntie asked a son, he said, who is here, a big person here. I said, but how can you kick me out? Kick me out of my land, land which my great-great-grandfathers lived on, uh -huh. and you also lived on. Have you forgotten that? You know, that is, that is, that is the problem which we have. These also are the sort of things we have found mm. out. Looking at this yeah. hot cake, mm. and of course population is increasing. I was reading the summarized version mm. of your report, mm. and one of the issues you came out with was compensation. Mm. Yes. Compensation. Recently yes, yes. we saw Parliament mm. approving uh, billions of money mm. to mm. be compensated. We mm. have Medada mm. uh, Chichoncho, Chichoncho, who mm. is going to begin about 3.8. Then yes. we have uh, Dodoviko uh, Mwanje, who yes, is going yes, to yes, get yes. about... 3.8. Yes. Then also the Buganga is a factor. Mm, mm. Let's look at compensation. First, mm. what is the definition of compensation for you in this land sector? Mm. What are we referring to for the benefit of our view? Mm. Land compensation. Well, well let me say this. Mm. The country, rather than the mm. issue, we don't look at that. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it, it happened when we had already mm. finished our report. But Chichoncho, yes, we visited mm. the press there. Now, I think what we have to look at, and what the Commission looked at, mm -hmm. is comp how is the competition done? You know? There must be some element of humanity. Mm -hmm. that you, get, you just can't come out and kick out mm -hmm. eh? a, a, a family. You come at uh, 2 o'clock, 
at night, 3 p.m., get out and you bring uh, uh, bulldozers. You start bulldozing, the, the, uh, knocking down the houses, including their own properties. That we condemned. That we condemned. So in any, uh, in any compensation, there must be humanity. You must feel that, yes, if you were, it was you, how would you feel? You know? So there must be an element of, uh, uh, you, you, got, you got to, be, to, to, to behave humanly, mm. you know, not because it is yours, therefore you must use the powers you have and the correction you have and carry bulldoze. What is the aim of this compensation yeah. government giving now, these billions to individuals? Now, 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 the, the compensation, mm. we looked at that issue, mm. you know. And the people had houses there, you know. We had felt that maybe the government should have compensated the owner and left the people, the people there, mm. because they don't have anywhere to go. Mm. People are born there; they are built their good houses. You know, we went there with the president, mm. and pre president felt so bad, you know. So. Uh, I don't know whether the, 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 the government took our advice mm. that will compensate mm. you sure can leave those people there. Mm. And uh, I think that was good. Now, uh, 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 the other thing is, you ask is, how do you compensate? Because here there's an element mm. of saving, mm. because this is public money. It's your money which you pay through taxes. Where, we've heard of a compensation <laughs> fund. Where yes. do we pick this yeah. money from? Now, it, it is how do we, mm -hmm. how do you compensate? Mm -hmm. You know, because it, it, there's a lot of things involved. Yes. First of all, there is the chief government value. Mm. You know, has that process been uh, 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 followed? Because we 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 went to. Um, there's a dam which was being built, which uh, uh, the former commissioner, election commission, uh, engineer, Badu Chilgun, was working after. And the, 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 his work had stalled because some people asked for too much money to allow the, the dam to pass, to, to, to allow the dam to be used mm. and pass there. So it, it is a national project. So the question here, the commission looked at. But watch, Tiba, before you mm. even go to mm. how it is done, mm. what is the aim? Isn't this going to be abused if we talk? I'll give an example. Recently, yeah. that was last year, where a government was trying to push a bill for compulsory land acquisition. Mm. Won't people exploit this? Why well, come and purchase a big chunk well, of land as well, quarters and I well, grab for compensation? Well, well, the commission looked at that, you know. There is a lot of uh, people want to take advantage. Mm. It's there. What you're saying is true. It's there. People and will that befit the People purpose? take advantage. Mm. I think the, 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 we lack a, a system which is tight. Mm. You know, before money is paid to Robert, mm. has the process been completed? Have they followed the process? This is important because, as I said, Badru he came and he made an appeal to us. Uh, please come and save. We went there, and you find somebody asking for three billion shillings mm. because he has got a few casoli, uh, 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 well, maize. Of demand and supply matter. If yes. if yes. all well, you demand is using my piece of land, claim, one, I'm claim, at one claimed uh, a stream which was uh, coming from Lake Victoria, it was passing through his Kibanja, mm -hmm. and, and he was claiming money. So it is abused, mm -hmm. you know. We have recommended that a system must be evolved which is f f uh, fair to everybody and also fair to government because when uh, they say oh government has got a lot of money so they take advantage that money which is paid unfairly to people should have been channeled to something else mm. yes so 
I agree with you that uh, a system must be improved, and I think we, we, we did recommend uh, in our report about that issue. Uh, what is the but source of these monies, these funds? Why do we, because I look at now, uh, Ndeva, okay, you're going to compass at about 3.8. Rusanja, you're going to compass at 3.8. Then Buganga, is that issue has been around for some time. Mm. Fund has been around. Mm. So where do we get this money? Well, it's the government money. It's your money. <laughs> what do you get? It's, it's, your mon fund? it's your money. It's your money. That you recommended maybe as a commission. Uh, it, 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 it is your money. It is the money you pay through taxes. Mm. You know? So the uh, consultation must be done. That how, why should you pay three billion shillings to somebody? What are the criteria you've used to reach that three billion? It, it is, this is where, uh, I'll give you another example. There was somebody big in government. He was told that, oh, there's, there's a, go a road which is going to go through somewhere. And, and he advised, go and buy that land. So he bought the land for 400,000 uh, 400, shillings. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the road did not go through mm -hmm. the area. You know? Then somebody gave him an advice. He said, no, you go to the Uganda Land Commission and, uh, and claim that I have, go I bo I, I have got uh, people on my land and I have no money to compensate them. You know? You know how much they paid him? 400 million. He bought, <laughs> he bought a piece of land for 400,000. Mm -hmm. And this is the abuse mm. we're talking about, mm. you know. So 400 million, he was paid, by the time he came to our commission, he had been paid 200 million. And he was telling us, I will also get My the 200 million left. So that is the situation. But also we need yeah. to know, Wachitiba, how sustainable mm. is this? Because land problems have been around. We've seen uh, squatters, people being evicted. If government is to walk the toil of compensating uh, landlords to have the squatters on this, how sustainable is this? How far can we go? Bob, Bob, let me tell you. Mm. It is, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Compensation can come because mm. we need development. Mm. But the most important thing that compensation must be done mm. properly mm. Also, let me just on, bo so. on both sides mm. you know the one who is being compensated must be fair Mr. Sorry to intervene, but let me just remind our viewer Sorry. that uh, feel free to call in that is the number on your screen 0702 23 as we look at land acquisition but also more compensation this is something that is coming up that government once talked about, but now we are seeing more cases of evictions, more court battles. And if government is to work a talk of ensuring they compensate, compensate, how sustainable, how realistic would this be? You've just seen a case in point for Rusanja, also for Ondeva, where uh, the mm -hmm. church was erased uh, by one Dodoviko Mwanja. And now he's due to smile to his bank account to get compensation there, billions of money. Mm. Mm. Oh, we have a caller. Hello, good morning. Please kindly turn down the volume of your TV set. Reduce the volume of your TV set. Kindly please turn down the volume of your TV set. Okay, we've lost that one, but please, in case you're to call in, just reduce the volume of your TV set, give us your name, and where you're calling from. Uh, doctor, what's looking at? sustainability of this well again is, 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 the question is as you are asking mm. can the government sustain that mm. can we can the government continue compensating mm. people you know so the land issue government must look at that and look at the commission looked at mm. the compensation because this is public money as I said earlier mm. you know so I think not I don't, not let's try. Hello, morning. Please turn down the volume of your TV set. Hello, caller. Thank you for calling in, but turn down the volume of your TV set. Or move away from your TV set. You either turn down the volume or move away so that we can effectively communicate. Well, that is the number on your screen, 702 23 24 
25. Feel free to call in on the topic of discussion, but please you must turn down the volume of your TV set. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Yeah. I'm Julius. I'm calling from Mukono. Yes, sir. Uh, caller from Mukono. Yeah. Then they should compensation the, the people. I'm getting you loud and clear. And they should compensate the people. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay, thank you so much, Julius from Mukono. They should compensate uh, people. Uh, that is what he's saying. So if the people are found on this land, a man instead of evicting thousands and thousands. Okay, let's pick another caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, caller. Please give us Hello. your name. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, how are you? I'm fine, how are you doing? I'm fine. Uh, please speak up, uh, be a bit more louder and kindly move away from your TV set. Go ahead, give us your name and where you're calling from. Hello? Okay, sorry, we've lost that one. I'll give it another try. Please, that is the number, 0702. 23, 24, 25. If you're to call in, kindly give us your name and where you're calling from. Then join the discussion uh, by giving us a question, your submission uh, regarding land compensation. Uh, that's what you're looking at. Uh, good morning. Good morning, you. I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you for calling in. Who are we speaking to? Um, I'm calling from uh, Fort Petro. Okay, call her from Fort Petro. Uh, I'm Jomendo Julius. Please, Julius, go ahead. Hello? Go ahead with your question, your submission. Okay, sorry. Well, uh, in the interest of time, let me hold calls at that. But thank you so much, yes. Julius from Fort Potro. That was another Julius from Mukono. Mm. Uh, who talked about Mukono, yes, Mukono should, was saying the, the, should go the, ahead and compensate. The, yeah, but go ahead and compensate. Mm. The commissioner's position was that uh, on what grounds are you compensating a person? Well, you raised the point of that this is government money. Mm. Can it be sustained? Mm. Okay, compensation should be done provided mm -hmm. the project is worthwhile. Mm -hmm. You know, on the land, mm -hmm. occupied by the people, mm -hmm. and they need compensation mm -hmm. so that the government can, can uh, uh, establish mm -hmm. development there. Mm, that is for government programs. Now yeah. let's look at individual. Individuals, individuals yes. If the, the road is passing through mm -hmm. your land, Fair enough, mm. but don't be too expensive. Don't ask for too much, mm -hmm. because now people. Doctor, say, I think that for government can be justified. But we are looking at, for example, the Lusanja, the Andeba issue, yeah. where Lusanja court ruled that yes, these people were illegal, but yeah. government again goes and compensates. Yes, yeah, because they lost it at all levels of court. Because, because, because you see, the, the uh, genuinely, uh, Shichoncho was the mm. owner mm. of the land. Mm. But then, I don't know whether, when he bought the land. Mm. Because he bought the land when people were there already. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, he says, me, I don't have the money mm. to compensate these people. Mm. Right? Mm. So, the government comes in because we don't want to, to evict. Mm. You're talking over about 3,000 people there living there. Eh? Uh, on the basis of each home may have uh, mm. seven, ten people. You know the, our uh, cultural uh, mm. setting, mm. you know. And then uh, the king says, me, I don't have the money. So the government can say, okay, all right, we'll compensate you, you get out. But what precedent live, is live this those setting? Because I believe there are thousands of chichonchos there. I, I, sorry? What precedent is this setting? Because in law you can rule a case of a precedent. Now, well, if, you're, if Chichoncho was compensated, mm. if a Chirab I have my thousand, is this selective? Won't I also say I don't have the money to compensate these people? So government pay me off and I'll leave this land. No, but, but if you buy land mm. where people are, are yes. you either compensate them yourself mm. 
or government can come in using the Uganda Land Fund to say, look, me, I don't have the money. Please, government, come help me to pay off these people. Politically, it's tenable. Mm. And uh, from the humanitarian point of view, it is also acceptable. You cannot make these people, you know, suffer because somebody, Chichonjo, has come. If government comes in and says, look, we pay you off, you go and leave our people settle. Now, the question is how the process of compensation, the termination of the compensation, the amount, this is where the problem is. This is where the problem is. And this is where uh, uh, Ugandans have said, no, you do that, and then you get. The, the, we went somewhere, where uh, somewhere on Entebbe Road, you know. Somebody was told, you go and buy that land, because the new road which mm. passes through the Munyonyo, the, mm. passes through Munyonyo, mm. it, it is. Unfortunately, <laughs> the road did not pass through. Pass through his land. Mm. Now, uh, then they started quarreling. You know, we went there. Mm. I, I think it was uh, um, uh, my colleagues whom I know were not mentioned, but we went there to settle the problem. So the Ugandans now have picked up the idea mm. that oh, Crafty gov way. government government mm. has got money, mm. and uh, this is how mm. we should get it from the from mm. the government. Well, time is yeah. not our best ally. Yeah. Can I have your final remarks to yes. Ugandans, most so regarding land mm. compensation? Yeah. Uh, my appeal to Ugandans is that, first of all, develop patriotism. I think it's important. When you have land and it is a government project, please don't ask for too much. Because the government doesn't have it. But if you, you insist, then the project will not take place. And therefore the community will not benefit. The country at large will not benefit. But you, will, you are selfish because they have given you what you think is little. That attitude must change. Secondly, I would like to appeal to Ugandans that COVID is around. We've lost a lot of good people. Last month, we lost brilliant Ugandans. You know? So please make sure that you follow government uh, instructions as far as COVID is concerned and wear masks, wash your hands and keep distances. Mm. Through that, maybe we shall survive. Mm. We, we, we shall continue to pray to God that look, here we are, protect us from COVID-19. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you so much, OHT, Dr. Robert Sevunya, Senior Presidential Advisor for Uganda on Buganda. Matters we've been looking at land acquisition and also the issue of compensation. My appeal to Ugandans is uh, Uganda is for all of us. Uh, he said owning land is a right for every Ugandan. Yes. <laughs> so many questions there. <laughs> but we just hope and pray that proper methods will be followed where compensation is wanted to ensure that government does not get into losses and also we fight crafty Ugandans who are out there to exploit every opportunity yes. and fleece government of yes. money. Yes. Yes. Have a lovely day. God bless you. Thank God you. bless Uganda. Keep safe. COVID is around. The number one <laughs> enemy of Ugandans in this era. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. Double Data.
Airtel introduces double data. The biggest deal ever on smartphones in Uganda. Buy a smartphone, 3G or 4G, and get 100% data bonus from Airtel. Airtel is giving you 100% bonus data on all weekly and monthly bundles for every new smartphone connected to Airtel for the first three months. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to enjoy double data. Double data, double data. Oh, bino bie biru mabaya, yeah. Airtel, the smartphone network, regulated by Uganda Communications Commission. Buyugira nyafe Uganda kuradi Afrika, tode mwa kumwenya, uruwaka mwenye mwenye waka judaba nyuanyi. Imbira yuvu dea tukula kumukwano, nobutondo obutubeza au, nebutu soboze sabudu mwukubira o mungeri, ubafe na tulibanja ulo, ne mungeri jetu kwa saganya mwemili mjafe. Na yechi tugatane tufuko mtu umu. Bwebu umu ya buva mchoo kunywa. Echa alelu ya jingate drink. Na alelu ya tamalin drink. Edeke ndedu kumale nyonta. Atenga ujanja wa mbirigo. Echa ukunywa chinoche chitegele mbiri jafe. Kubacha abutonde chukume kuchukumi. Uumiru echa ukunye chilimu mbisa.